So then we are back with more understandings from the uh, Hebraic English translation and uh, lots of it uh, we talked before regarding then Takanot, Masim and the understanding then from Yahweh himself in the form of the Son he came to make sure the laws then were clear and clean and away from Takanot Masim. So then we understand then in Hebraic understanding that destroy means including and excluding from the laws. Okay, Takanot Masim. Takanot is then man made laws that changes biblical law, and then Masim is the act of the rabbis or the behavior that makes sin no sin and no sin sin. In short, this is what it is. So then we begin to understand then the scriptures. And there is no church outside of the camp, see the church. Camps are the churches. There is no church outside of the camp. So then, reading the rest of it from the time of Yohanan, and then Yahweh himself when he came as the son, and then later the Shilishim, and then Shimon, Shaul, and what they taught, so then we begin to understand where they are coming from. Shaul, for instance, he was a very bright student. He studied under Gamaliel. And then the minimum requirement was then you had to know the entire Torah by memory. Minimum requirement. And he did it. He knew it by memory. So then later then he had a ministry to do. Ruach HaKodesh said very plainly in Acts and then there is the order given and then Shaul then was part of it. And then Ruach HaKodesh said set apart Shaul and Barnabas to me to do what they are then to do. They had an anointing upon them to do the work. And obviously Shaul was a set apart. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. Truly an Israelite and he was then saved and he was then involved with relinking the Gentiles. So then we understand where he's coming from. Most of the guidelines from Shaul, those were done in desperation. If you begin to understand many places he went in Asia, those were extremely evil. In many places they had temples, they had prostitutes and people naked and men with men, women with women and men with children of both sexes and they were disgusting and then mixing with animals Yuck. and then Shaul and he saw it oh boy he knew he couldn't shove it down their throats the Torah these people barely know how to handle themselves he came up with emergency guidelines so this is what we have most of the guidelines are emergency measures So at least to the Gentiles they have some sort of understanding who the Creator is. So it's a much lighter understanding than the real Torah because the real Torah is extremely high learning and those are only set for the camps. So then he went out and he started preaching and teaching to the Gentiles. So then we have his Megillah, they went to Rome, his Megillah they went to Ephesus, Galatia, Colossae, Salonica, and then Titus in Crete, and then lots of his writings then when he would send the Megillah, Mark was also with him.
and he was involved in many trips very 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 many not only four because then later the Greco-Romans not understanding the feasts of Elohim then they came up with the four trips absolutely scandalized lie because in each year in Jerusalem they must observe the first, second and third feasts they are required to be in Jerusalem or in Jerusalem and he himself being a devoted person he went to Jerusalem many times so those nice trips that you have there in your Bibles delineated with nice colors and the such those are lies he made it up he went to Jerusalem many times because of the feasts if you read part of the Acts many times he said he wanted to be in Jerusalem for the feast so he was managing his time and his schedule to make sure he could then take the boat from certain ports and then go into Jerusalem to observe the feast then we also understand that during Shaul's time there was a transitional time and they began to understand Hebrews. That's why you have Hebrews in the Bible. The Hebrews are the updates of the service of the tabernacle. So then when Moses brought the people out of Egypt, they were given the first service, they trained for the second service. And the first anointing came. So then we understand the work of Shaul and then the other Shalishim. And Shaliak, Shaul had a dual role. He had to relink the people and teach them the kingdom to come. Every time you read his instructions, emergency sometimes instructions, you can understand relinking and then kingdom to come. Shaliak Yahanan later he became involved with the third role relinking the people kingdom to come and vengeance so then he went to Patmos years later because back in those days he would not dare going against the order from an emperor Domitian was a Roman emperor he was threatened by what Yohanan was preaching and teaching should say prophesying precisely but involved in it he also taught and he preached so then back in those days when there was a person endowed with an anointing they thought they were gods themselves and they could come up at any moment and take the kingdom away from them he would simply remove the mission from his throne and he would sit himself. That's what he thought. Not a chance in the world. Send this person to the island. There he stays until he dies. And that was it. The wish of the emperor was done. And he died on the island. And how do we understand the severity of the Roman law? there is a hint when you read Acts when he shipwrecked on Malta what was the reaction of the soldiers in the boat they were ready to slaughter the prisoners because if they were caught in the mainland it would be the life of the soldiers in exchange for the life of the prisoners that fled away very severe Yohanan did not ride on the island Plus, he was there until he died. It was the Alcatraz of our days. Steps of formation. Yohanan was not interested in, in being an emperor. 
but then the anointing upon him since they didn't understand where he was coming from they were threatened because of the vengeance to come then he simply died on the island he wouldn't dare ever 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 going against the law of the Roman Emperor those people on the island if they would let him escape he would be their lives their necks on the line boy no repeal what did you do with the prisoner escape to your neck this is the way it was before that's why the Romans they were depicted as the legs of iron and then they would find the person and execute the person on top of it very dangerous deadly dangerous so then Yahanan while on mainland he had visions obviously in a camp protected and he had to go out and prophesy upon the nations then later he went to the island and never left the island anymore so then we begin to understand what it means the Hebraic understanding of the scriptures so then we are more familiar with it and we can then share with other people realistically so then people can become more aware of it because there are so many lies in a regular Bible you begin to do a thorough search from the Hebrew perspective boy you get uh, in quotes shocked there are so many twistings Cornelius never had a vision Shimon never had a trance people with demons had trances Shimon simply went to rest and then he had a dream visions and dreams, visions in the camps dreams outside the camp the virgin Miriam she was outside the camp did she have a vision? no she had a dream she simply had a dream and in the dream then it was explained And the situation is Job or Job. Job then was he a person practicing justices? No, he was the wealthiest. Then when the Creator said to Satan, "Have you considered my servant Job? There is no wealthier person than him." And they say, oh, it's because I have put a hedge around him. Remove the hedge and let's verify what he's made out of. Yoba was prideful. He was rich. He was the wealthiest. He began to boast. That's why he was tested. But then the Hebrews, when they translated, they were making synonymous of being wealthy as practice injustices or in our word righteous but doesn't exist the word righteous is practice injustices based upon his instructions he was simply wealthy other person Joseph the uh, step father of the creator uh, in a form of the son he had a dream outside the camp he had a dream and the dream was explained you don't understand but the prophets of old 
They used to live in tiny camps. Did you know this? Daniel, Ezekiel. You do understand, but they were in secret living in a very special place. When they say the person had a dream or a vision, you must understand the concept. Those people, they had dreams. When they were outside the camp, sometimes they would, then they would go near the river, they would take a nap. They would rest. That's when they had those dreams. But then those were explained. Try to understand the concept of the whole works. You begin to filter and filter and filter until you find the truth. Why would the Creator test a person that was righteous for? There was no reason. The only person that was tested and slaughtered for no reason was the son. He didn't have any reason to do otherwise with anybody. Job, he was the wealthiest and he was boasting. He had a pride in his life. And he was tested. So when they translated, they made a synonymous word of being wealthy. Because this person was so wealthy was because he was then practicing justices. So they decided practicing justices is equal wealth. When the fact is he was so wealthy, he began to boast. And then he was tested. And he said he had then a vision by the river Ulam, uh, then another vision by the other place, and then another vision. No, come on. He went over there for a walk, and then sometimes during the walk he got tired, he slept. During the time of rest came a dream, as did with Shimon. Later, the translators, to make it very important, you know, the person had a vision. Daniel had a vision. Was he in a camp? No. He had a dream. Valid and true. Dreams are always given outside of the camp, in the camp's visions. Always like this, always, every time, every time, every time. Every time. Abraham, he saw angels in person. But then the problem is the word vision. Do you understand? A vision. Did he have a vision or did he have a visitation? So then he must understand and filter it. There are areas where a person simply had a dream. There were times when truly an angel in a form of a person visited. That's another situation. 
But in some Bibles they use visions. Some Bibles they use another word. But every time there is a vision, you have to ask yourself, was the person outside of the camp? Was a person had a dream? In the camps, visions. Some translations, a person had a visitation. And an angel showed up to the person. Perfectly fine. The angels also, they showed up to Abraham. But not in the form of a vision. When you read any piece of scripture, it's stating, and then the vision of Daniel. Then you can understand that it was not a vision, it was a dream. However, when the angel showed up to him, then showed up in a person, in a person's form. Then you begin to filter. So it depends upon what you are reading. Some Bibles is stated, and then Shimon had a trance. Holy boy! Trance? Those are demoniacs. Do you understand the concept? Some translations you're going to find had a vision when in fact he had a dream. Shimon had a trance. He was upstairs resting. He had a dream. So then we must be very cautious. Some translations are badly translated. Very badly. So every time you then are reading the uh, previous covenant and every time there is the word vision has to be in a camp. If then an angel showed up in a form of a vision you can be sure that it was a dream. If the person then was near the river and then the angel showed up then is a form of a person. Perfectly fine. So be sure what you are reading then. Some translations vision, some translations came in person, some translations trance, some translations visions. And people sometimes don't ask, what is a dream, what is a vision? Because as the world evolves, more and more translations are coming up and makes fit the lifestyle of the people. So then they become to invent another area, another words. So when you hear then prophets near rivers and then states vision, ah, 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 it was a dream. If it doesn't state vision, then an angel showed up in person. Perfectly fine, but it came in a person. Then we begin to understand what it means. So then we are sharper in our understanding, so to speak. Because we are not taken then by junks of other translations. And it is consistent every time. can verify it for sure because then uh, we can be uh, more certain of many other areas but then there is the understanding of it the fact is we must be more acquainted with the Hebrew understanding of the scriptures so we understand a lot already we understand in times of then the uh, Noah and the pairs of animals became a pair of each and then the extra were for his own consumption. Job, he had a pride problem. He was the wealthiest. He had to be tested. He became boastful. And then we understand visions and dreams. 
Now we understand Cornelius did not have a vision, neither a dream. Can you imagine the audacity of those Greco-Roman people placing the Bible together? Liars and scoundrels, the worst kind of ever. Didn't have either. Then we are more acquainted of what's coming then because then we are more prone of understanding with clarity. And we must find out then more information regarding it. Then in Daniel, the uh, tenth chapter states, at least in part, so we can understand and then the uh, the meaning of it. And this is the point, okay? It states from the uh, original writings that there are areas of understanding when then angels they show up in person and when a person then is having a dream, okay? It shows part of the understanding on the fourth verse. And in the four and the twentieth day of the first month, Myself saw then at the side of the great river that is Hidikel. Then he lifted his eyes and he observed, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with the fine gold as of Euphas. And he describes. And myself, Daniel alone, saw the vision. It shows you plainly. And myself saw alone the vision for the men that were with me saw not the vision but a great quaking came upon them. So obviously he had an experience and we must filter it. He was outside of the camp, he was near the river, he was taking a walk, and then he rested. And while doing so, he had a dream. And in a dream, he saw it. So then we are more acquainted with the step-by-step -step areas. So then every time in a camp, visions outside the camp, dreams. So then many other areas you could explore more, but then uh, we try to stay with the uh, renewed covenant of the scriptures. Those are very important guidelines and then later a person can refer back to the uh, previous covenant but leave those for those in the camps because those are more high learning but then we kind of have the understanding of it of then many areas that were scandalized so then we can untwist them 
So then we make sure we begin to understand properly. Please stay tuned.